Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you are in recovery or not. This is episode 96, how to get over the fear of missing out by keeping the focus on yourself. Before I get into today's topic on FOMO, which I'm really psyched to share about, I want to tell you about some really exciting things that are going on with me here at Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. My private membership group name has been selected. So thank you to those of you who voted. And the winner is Secure, Loved, and Brave. That's the name of my new private membership group, which is going to launch in the next few weeks. I think it's actually April 1st. Here's what will be included. Two group coaching calls per month via Zoom a private Facebook group to support you between calls, access to a private Trello board, which includes a shit ton of bonus resources, including my course, Six Weeks to Better Boundaries with Barb, which by the way is a $1,350 value. And there will be an insider only Facebook live event each month. And the topics for that will be taken from the group. And listen to this, it's going to be only $47 a month for the first three months, and then it will be $97 a month after that. That is only going to be the option for a while. I haven't decided how long, but I'm not going to leave it at that introductory rate forever. Um, So stay tuned to hear more about that. And in addition to doing that, Things are shaping up for my 100th podcast episode. I will be having at least three guests, two of whom will be sharing their recovery-related music that they've written. I'll be sharing three recovery readings that have been key to my journey of recovery, as well as talking about how to cultivate an attitude, or excuse me, how to cultivate a gratitude practice. Okay, so now on to the topic at hand, FOMO fear of missing out. I'm talking about this now because I got a message from someone the other day asking if I knew of a podcast on patience because she says she's always focused on the fear of missing out. She gets overwhelmed with the feelings that arise at such times. She's always focused on where other people are in their recovery and how she's not as far along as they are and she thinks she should be farther. She gets so wrapped up in that, that it's debilitating. And I told her, I don't think patience is the actual issue here. And by the way, I don't know of a podcast on patience. So this exchange we had about FOMO made me realize that this is really a good topic for my podcast, because I know that this is something that a lot of people in recovery struggle with. Sometimes we refer to it as FOMO. Sometimes we think of it as comparing our insides to other people's outsides. But I would like to suggest that we should be calling this what it is, which is self-abandonment. I think this terminology is important and here's why. Most people in recovery grew up with some kind of dysfunction, which means we learned to abandon ourselves. Dysfunctional environments create that impulse to abandon ourselves. Even though the thing that many of us fear most is abandonment, we do it to ourselves all the time. And part of the process of recovery is learning to not do that. So I think that it's important to use that language rather than saying things like I self-sabotage or I don't show up for myself or I don't follow through. Because when we hear the language self-abandonment, it's pretty stark and very clear what's going on. And when we connect our issues or problems to our status as a person in recovery, 
we're reminded that we're not alone and that there is a solution for such issues. When you are dealing with issues that are a result of you being in recovery, you should talk about them using the language of recovery so that you don't forget there's a solution. As a reminder, the point of the 12 steps of recovery is not to get you sober, to get you clean, to get you abstinent. It's to get you to a spiritual awakening. And a spiritual awakening could be defined as the ability to be, see, think, do, have, and believe that which you could not do, be, see, think, do, and have, and believe before recovery. In other words, you are changed. You've been brought back into alignment with God. Here's the thing, though. You can't get into alignment with God and still abandon yourself. We are all beloved children of God. You are a beloved child of God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've said, what you've thought, what you've believed. You're still a beloved child of God, and there's nothing you can do about that. You can't change it. That is the way it is. And in order to get into alignment with your higher power, you're going to have to stop abandoning yourself. So back to FOMO. When we are embroiled in the fear of missing out, we are entirely focused on other people and what they're doing. That is is not going to serve you. When we learn to keep the focus on ourselves, because we are the only thing we can control, we stop focusing on other people. When you are focused on other people, you're focused on things you cannot control. When you're focused on yourself, you're focused on that which you can control. And when you're focused on other people, you're not living your life. And when you're not living your own life, it means you're destined to live an unsatisfying, unfulfilling life of misery. You've created a built-in excuse for not living up to your, to your potential as a beloved child of God. And what that does is reinforce the impulse to abandon yourself because you don't think you deserve to show up for yourself. So if you want to get over the fear of missing out, if you want to stop comparing your insides to other people's outsides, take the focus off of others and put it on you. The amount of energy that you will have available to you from taking the focus off of other people and putting on you is going to amaze you. Now, cultivating the ability to take the focus off of other people and put it on you is going to take some time because you probably have a well-worn groove, so to speak, of focusing on things outside yourself. But you can fill in that groove and you can create a new groove where you focus on yourself. Whatever you need to do to make sure to keep the focus on yourself, do it. I don't care if you have to put sticky notes all over your bathroom mirror and your rear view mirror in your car. If you have to set a timer to remind yourself to keep the focus on yourself. If you send yourself emails or text messages that say, keep the focus on yourself. I don't care what it is you have to do, but if you want to be a person who is psychologically mature, is stable, and who has peace and serenity in their life, there is no possible way for you to get there if you're not focused on yourself. I just fixed, fixed, I just finished a six weeks The Better Boundaries group coaching program, and I told them that in regards to boundaries, there's five rules, and here they are. Keep the focus on yourself, 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 keep the focus on yourself. Because your boundaries are about you. 
And it's the same thing here. Your life is about you. So if you're continually focused on what other people are doing, you are not living your own life. And it's hard to have a well-lived life when you're focused on other people. In fact, I would say it's impossible to have a well-lived life when you're constantly focused on other people. If you want what those other people have, then do what they're doing, which I can guarantee you is not comparing themselves to other people and then beating the shit out of themselves for not measuring up. Now, if you need some help learning how to keep the focus on yourself, listen to my podcast number 10, which is called Focus on Me. I also have an article on medium.com about that, which goes into more detail than the podcast and my medium articles are linked in my Instagram bio. I'm at Higher Power Coaching on Instagram if you're not already following me. So my friend, I challenge you. Dare to take the focus off of other people and put it on yourself. It's the only way you're going to get to being happy, joyous, and free. And remember, healing is possible. It's never too late to recover, and no one is beyond hope. Not even you. Talk to you next week. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net, or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.